Auburn managed to pick up what I think is the most talented quarterback in this class that nobody is talking about, even as they were probably talking about him a year ago. His name is Demetrius Davis, and the reason you don't hear a bunch about him is because he's five foot ten and he played quarterback in North Shore, which is the same place where Zach Evans played running back. But what I think gets lost in Demetrius Davis's well recruitment is that last year he passed four thousand yards and one thousand yards. Not unlike Kyler Murray did in 2018. He has the goods. And since he was 10 years old, all he's been doing is breaking tackles and going toward the end zone while throwing bombs. As a matter of fact, he capped off a five-touchdown passing performance to lead North Shore over Duncanville 41-36 in the 6A state final as a sophomore. And all he's been doing is showing out ever since. So when Auburn managed to land his commitment yesterday... I said, wow, okay, there's Cam Newton light. And I mean that. He has the ability to move in that way. He has a cannon for an arm that way. And he's a traditional leader in the way that you want for your quarterback. So more than that, you take a look at his last two seasons, 5,743 yards, 73 touchdowns, 5,992 yards on the ground, 27 more scores on the ground. He's 31-1 and one as a starting quarterback, right? This kid has basically been somebody's pupil since the third grade when he went to, yeah, Peyton Manning's passing academy, and he's been there for the last four years. Also gets tutored by Jeff Blake, Clint Stoner, and J.P. Tillman, among others, working out with NFL running back Derek Blaylock, and I love what Jeff Blake had to say about him choosing Auburn, which is, I think most quarterbacks that have played for Malzahn have been pretty good, but you have to know that this kid is absolutely elite. And when you look at what Malathon has been able to do with quarterbacks, and as much as I want to poo-poo Bo Nix's true freshman performance, he beat Bama. And as much as I don't feel great about Jared Stidham, it seems that Bill Belichick is going to ride with him. So if that means anything to you, but also... People have been trying to fire Gus Malzahn for years, and now he's getting what some folks think is the best quarterback he's had since Nick Marshall, and a kid that is in line with Russell Wilson when it comes to his ability to make plays when the play has broken down. And now with Chad Morris as his offensive coordinator, or as I like to call it, chief strategist, I'm expecting for him to be pretty decent with Bo Nix, but also in the next couple of years as Demetrius Davis finishes up his senior season and then heads to Auburn where they look like they are building, especially with Owen Papo going into his sophomore season, and he's a superstar linebacker. They just put Derrick Brown into the draft in the first round. We know that Kevin Steele has a really great defense week in, week out during the college football season. And as much as we want to throw shade at Auburn and the SEC, they seem to always be there. Then add in there that, yeah, Tala, Talia Tonga Valoa chose Maryland, right? That's interesting to me if for no other reason than Lance Lejean is also in that same 2019 class, and he also is at Maryland. And last week, Lejean actually tweeted, I said challenge accepted, and a lot of people were going, oh, is that a clue? Because the day that was the day that Talia Tonga Valoa went into the transfer portal. And him coming out at Maryland also looks good in that Demian Robinson, four-star defensive end, is already there. They have Isaiah Jacobs, local product from right up here at Owasso. Yeah, Bill Blankenship's Owasso. Also, younger brother of Josh Jacobs. Mike Loxley flipped Rakeem Jarrett, top five-star wide receiver in the 2020 class from LSU to Maryland. All of a sudden, the Maryland stands feeling some kind of way. But for Oklahoma fans, what does that mean? I believe that it's one fewer place for Caleb Williams to really entertain. LSU picked up their four-star blue chipper in Garrett Nussmeyer. And now, Talia Tonga-Valoa transferred, also in that 2019 class, to Maryland, where they're going to have him and Lejean. If you're Caleb Williams, why would you want to even entertain those places? Especially after you drop your top three, which include two places that took in quarterbacks in the last three weeks. Meanwhile... You got Lincoln Riley over here who is just rubbing his hands together and can't wait for what we all seem to think is inevitable now. Just checking in on the 24-7 crystal balls, 24 crystal balls, 100% to Oklahoma for Caleb Williams. Now, where it gets real interesting because Mario Williams has achieved five-star status by both ESPN and Rivals now, and what you look at in the top 25 is 
one kid that we all expect to perhaps end up at Oklahoma, and another one for which is the top running back in this class, Kamara Wheaton, that DeMarco Murray could really make some waves with in landing him. He's in a three-horse race with SMU and LSU to win this kiddo's services, along with a couple of other talented running backs in this class, like LJ Johnson. And I would not be surprised to find that Oklahoma, in particular, is looking to take in two running backs, but also three if they can get there because they missed out on Jason McClellan last year. Now, add in all of that, that Oklahoma State got a lot better on Friday as well with Colin Oliver. I don't know why Oklahoma didn't get involved. He still didn't have an offer from them, but I would not be shocked to find out that they do. Six foot two, 220 pounds, a new four star, but also been tremendously good when it comes to reading and scraping. I really enjoy his film. I, I, I would, I would have offered him, but then again, you know me, I love the Oklahoma kids. Also announcing the Super 30 Day, a couple of Tulsa area products, one in particular, one Owen Ostrowski, going all the way up into, I believe it's 25. So of the top 30 players in this class, good on him.